Hey kids, you're listening to the internet's wettest podcast about video games, consoles, and pancakes. The SML Podcast. Uh, all right, Jacob is, he just said that he's on his way from his parents with his kids, so he's probably going to be a few minutes late. I figure we'll just start with Adam. All right. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say it, but I was not going to do this if he was here, so that worked out perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he will be here. <laughs> ah, well, then that's when I'll leave. Let's time it up <laughs> just perfectly. Sounds good. What's up, everybody? This is the SML Podcast. I am your host, Joe. We've got Aki and Bree here to start things off. How are you two doing? All right. We lost Aki. Aki's not here. Yeah, I am. Okay. Aki's here. Yay. We've got Bree and Aki. How's everyone doing? Pretty good. You're just so chatty today. Anyway, we have a guest joining us. It's been a while, but our good friend Ryan (laughs) Niemiller is back on the show. Ryan, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic. How are you, my friend? I am, I'm doing, that's, that's about as far as things get with me anymore. I'm just doing. You know what? That's all I can ask of you, quite yeah. frankly. <laughs> Anything more than that is me being selfish. <laughs> so how are things on your end? You have, uh, you have a few hours away from a babby. Correct. Yeah. I think, uh, the reason I haven't been on the show in so long, cause we had been doing this like at least every couple months, at, you know, at least I was on. And then life uh, but happened. But then. Then my wife decided to get pregnant, and it was mine, so I have to oh. be a part of it, <laughs> or whatever. Dude, does that mean so, you had sex? Dude, I, I can I can prove definitively I've had sex at least one time. That and really, awesome. yeah, who's a loser now, everyone that turned me down in high school and college? <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, one time, nailed it. <laughs> Knocked it right out of the park, had a baby instantly. That's, that's, that's the that only thing in the park. I guess so. Yes. If it was out yeah, of but, the park. I mean, that. but, but, but I'm from Indiana. So, uh, sex is only for procreation. So I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I did what was required of me as a man. You oh, did the what pain. the good Lord intended. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, but he's awesome. I got, I got a little son. Uh, he's, uh, he, he, he smiles and shits himself a lot. That's, that's kind of what he does. And it's, uh, that's it's cool. About- all you can expect at that age. So, yeah. Yeah, he's good at both of them. And, uh, awesome. you know, so, so I, I don't want to brag. He's only three months, but he's shitting at like a 12 month <laughs> level. So, <laughs> those are good numbers. Those are good starting numbers. <laughs> mm-hmm. good num- what are high wh- achiever? What's the, the upper limit, do you think, that yeah, for, for shitting? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, here in a couple of months, we got to introduce the the actual food into his diet a little bit as well. Mm. And from what everyone tells me, uh, that's when the shits get real. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. that that that's when you find out if you're uh, if you're going to be a good father or if you're going to uh, go out for some cigarettes and not come back <laughs> for eighteen years. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, have you had any where it just goes up the back yet? Oh yeah, just this morning. Nice. In fact. Nice. Yeah. I'm not telling this like to sound like I'm like, you know, the greatest dad of all time, but I will say it is incredibly weird how quickly that just becomes just like, eh, all right, I guess I'm cleaning that up. You know, (laughs) before the baby was born, my brain was like, that's going to be fucking gross. I can't. Oh, God, you better not ever do that. And now you're just like, all right, I guess I'll get up (laughs) and get you out of those clothes. I guess this one's worth standing up for. (laughs) <laughs> Anything exciting going on in your world? In my world, uh, we hit episode 900 last week. All right, congrats. Yeah, 900 episodes, so this is 902. Uh, 10. Should I, should I name the episode 90210? Yes. I think you should. Hey, kids.
hundred percent. Gonna write and that then, down. But then you talk about all the games that you would give a ten, and that's how it works. <laughs> so what what games would you give a ten this year so far to? Oh, this year I, I will be one hundred percent honest with you. Because of the whole, and this sounds like an excuse, and it's just my, my now excuse to get out of anything for at least the next 18 years, I've not had enough time to dive into brand new games this year. <laughs> because because of, uh, you know, he was born in May, so it was the lead up to that. Then since then, uh, I am hoping to get to start uh, Sea of Stars this week. Uh, nice. I had, uh, I had uh, kickstarted that, actually. So I got my codes for that, waiting for my physical edition. And then... Um, finally uh get around to uh breath of the wild which i never started back in the day i know everyone else played tears of the kingdom but i'm uh i like to be a game behind <laughs> any thoughts on starfield are you picking that up this week uh, i will be playing it i mean it's on game pass so i'll be playing it at some point i just i just have to figure out which potentially 150 hour game my brain has the space for right now <laughs> i can answer that for you none of them <laughs> that's probably true i i, I feel a lot of, i can get it into i can get 20 hours into a lot of 100 hour games yeah that's how i am i i wish more games were like two three hours for me that, that be- sweet spot is like 10 like that 10 to 15 where i feel like i got my money's worth but i don't feel that i'm like you know being held captive by wanting needing to finish it no uh one game that kind of took me by surprise that i thought i was like cruising through uh, was Atlas Fallen, and then when you hit the third area, the game just like explodes in size, and I'm I'm still like plugging away at that game, and I'm <laughs> like I'm having fun I with it. I hundred percented that one. Woot! Nice. I'm still plugging away at it, but part of me is like, you know, I have other shit I need to play now. No, you don't. You're fine. Like I want to keep playing Atlas Fallen. It already sours me that I missed a treasure map in the first area. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's missable shit. Yeah. Yeah, there is. That's <laughs> bullshit. Sucks. That that really put a damper on me <laughs> wanting to finish the game. But I don't know. Maybe I'll see it through to the end. Uh, I was supposed to get my Starfield premium upgrade today from Amazon. Uh, when it was supposed to show up, I got an email saying that it's not showing up and they don't know when I'll get it. Okay. Yeah. So I contacted Amazon and asked what their solution was going to be because their solution was a we're sorry. That's not yeah. a solution. That's not yeah, a solution. my bad. <laughs> we apologize for the inconvenience. Well, do something about it. So I got on chat support and they're like, we want to do what we can to make this right for you. I'm like, here's what you could do to make it right for me. I want the steel book. I don't care when it comes. If it's delayed, it's delayed, whatever. I want to play Starfield tomorrow. That's when I'm supposed to be able to. That's what the early access is for. I want to play it tomorrow, and I want a steel book whenever. They're like, we'll give you five dollars. No. Like, no, you'll cancel my order. So I canceled it. Yeah, yeah. And I bought it digital for thirty-one twenty-four or whatever the hell the price is with Game Pass. Or nice. Thirty-one forty-nine. Nice, and you can just pick up the steel book later. Yeah, hopefully if they don't all sell out, but I have a feeling they won't. I think this well, when it comes to steel books, uh, give it about a year, and Best Buy will be uh, clearancing them. They always seem to have just thousands of steel books for everything. No games, just the steel books <laughs> that they always clearance out. So the shame is that they, I haven't been able to find their Dead Rising or no Dead Island Two steel book. Is it Dead Island Two? I'm yeah, still Dead just Island upset 2. that back during Cyberpunk. You were supposed to be able to choose a steel book because there was three different ones, and they wouldn't let me choose. I think it was supposed to be random. I don't think it, you were supposed to choose. Uh, well, they only had one at the store I went to, just one. <laughs> so everyone got the same one, and of course it wasn't the one I really wanted. <laughs> but eBay's for Aki. True. <laughs> Bree, what about you? What, what's, uh, what's something you're playing or looking forward to playing? Uh, I am looking forward to finding the time to start Sea of Stars. I, I've i been uh, been a little all over the place with everything else. Uh, I've recently been going back to a classic JRPG for me, so that was kind of taking up some of my time. I was playing some Final Fantasy VIII. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm really just, I, I want to dive into Sea of Stars. I might also dip into Starfield, but I'm going to give it at least a week. Why a week? 
because other shit done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I didn't I know if you were like waiting for a reason or if it's just like no, other games gotta I just, come first. I think it's just other. I I I'm not as excited for Starfield as everybody else around me seems to be, and I want to be excited for it, but like. I've got some real life stuff I got to get out of the way. I've got a little vacation coming up and I just, I, I don't, I don't want to be interrupted. You know, if it ends up being something I'm going to fall in love with, I want to be able to give it the time. So that's fair. Yeah. I'm, and I'm, I feel that that's a, that's a good way too, just to let people scream their heads off. Cause, uh, my little, mm-hmm. uh, my little, uh, exploration of Twitter, I refuse to yeah. call it X, uh, Twitter <laughs> today. Uh, it was just a shit show both ways oh yeah e- e- either xbox fans being really mad th- at some of the review scores or yeah. sony fans being really mad and saying it sucks even though they haven't played it because they can't play it on their so i'm gonna go ahead and just let that stop <laughs> and then i'll oh, just play yeah. it on my I'm gonna, own accord i'm gonna kind of ignore most of that stuff other than you know it it comes on my feed whether i like it or not but i, I have a couple <laughs> of friends in particular that i i know are real excited for it and are, are diving in like this second uh, because I think they got the, you know, you can play early access, whatever package. And, um, you know, I, I value their opinions specifically on what they think I will or will, won't enjoy in a game. And so I'm kind of waiting on their analysis to give to me. And uh, I think that'll that'll help me make that decision w- when I'm going to jump into it. So what about you, Jacob? You've been quiet. Well, yeah, I just popped in. Yeah, wiener. So I, well, I also like being a creep and, you know listening in success you have succeeded at that Jacob, what are you looking forward to playing this these these next few weeks or presently uh i say this dead absolutely dead serious um and also it helps that i'm a game or a brand ambassador for outright games but honestly i'm looking forward to rainbow high like if that game is as chill as brats and like the other uh recent games that outrights released like honestly i'm all there for it i just like are you using a different mic or something today yeah i have to fucking use uh i have to use the uh micro the the mic on my iphone uh because it was very lispy oh uh i don't i don't know sounds better now okay i mean it's resting on my chest hair so you know, maybe my chest hair is helping dampen everything. Uh, I'm listening. <laughs> it always oh. gets se- anytime I come here, it gets real sexy. I don't know what it is. The image, but... the image in my head, just nope. Yeah, it made you gag it. like it did me. Yeah, yeah. So Ryan, as I was saying, that trail goes all the way down. If you know what I mean. Who gives me the collie wobbles? <laughs> Just sound effects whenever Jacob starts talking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it's like this year I've just been what on this like. <laughs> so as I was saying, like this Listen, year I've just, fuck <laughs> snort. I've just been like, like really chill games like Disney Dreamlight Valley and stuff like that. Like that's all I play anymore. That and uh, I just actually beat Power Wash Simulator. I finally beat that game all by myself too. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, like, I really want you to listen to this episode when it's done because you sound really funny tonight. Okay. Uh, like, is it just me or does anyone else think he sounds hilarious when he's talking? Like, mm-hmm. like liquids just dribbling out of his mouth as he's talking. Sometimes I mean, that, when he talks, yeah, a little bit, but most of it, not so much. That could the dri- be the dribbling what? liquid did not help my image. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, Ryan, I mean, that could just be beads of sweat coming down. My so, hand anyway. And- uh, yeah. <laughs> should we dive into Barbecue news or no? I know what we could talk about. Uh, Mr. Ryan, how's your stand-up things going? Any any news on that front? Any shows coming yep. up? I'm uh, going. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm go- go- going pretty well. I'm uh, getting back on the road a little bit. I took uh, some, you know, I've basically been working part-time since April just for the the whole baby nonsense. Uh, but yeah, it's going pretty good. I'm in uh, Fort Worth, Texas on September 8th and 9th. That's the next thing I got coming up. And I got really busy October. Uh, I can't remember if I had, if it was out yet when last time I was on the show, but my, my special came out in April. That's on Amazon Prime and Tubi. If you're cheap and don't mind ads, you can watch it for free there. <laughs> I'm proud to so say yeah, I bought it on Amazon and showed it I to some friends. That. 
I'm a cheap bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's totally that's what fine. Tubi's I- for Aki. Watch it on Tubi. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd be honest. I'd be watching it on Tubi myself, and it's my <laughs> own thing. So, yeah, so that's all going pretty good. It's nice. Uh, um, if there's one good reason to have a kid, it's I now have a lot of new material. I think that was a good business decision to impregnate <laughs> my wife. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't like when I refer to him as a good business decision, though. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I mean, does he count as a tax write off? No. I, I mean, I, I mean, not for my job. He does in general. I mean, because I mean, because right. I mean, he's research material, right? I mean, that I, 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 if if it wouldn't make him end up hating me, that I somehow got like the IRS to agree that he was strictly a business proposition <laughs> and not uh, made out of love, uh, I would try that. Right. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know. Kids gonna hate, the ki- kids naturally hate their parents anyway so you might as well make some more money off of it while you can that's a good point but 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 i am a pretty cool dad i've already i've already decided that's what i'm gonna be so you've decided that that doesn't make it real though i'm sorry <laughs> exactly. to tell you <laughs> no, no my, my son's gonna think i'm cool or he's in fucking trouble i'll tell you that much right now or is, is that constantly. the kid's name good deal then you can name the next kid bad deal yep <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But yeah, come see a show, CrippleThreat.com. My calendar is on there for anyone that's listening. Tell us about the uh the game uh was it convention you're playing? Yeah, I'm doing um uh in Portland, uh October 13th through 15th. I'm doing the uh, uh Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I'm doing a show there and I'm actually uh, I'm getting to do a panel, which is cool. What's your panel's gonna be about? Um it's gonna be about gaming with a disability. Really? And, I uh, have accessibility that to be stuff. A panel you would do. Yeah, I, I have I have no expertise on it whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, it must be real difficult to talk about your abnormally large penis the whole time. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it gets in the way. It keeps pushing the Z trigger the entire time when I'm just trying. Like, no, I don't want to aim right now. Oh, you guys thought it was my arms? No, no, no. That's not why we're here, folks. No. Z- I mean, that's why, that's why he's banned from Overwatch League, you know? <laughs> Yeah, but October thirteenth to fifteenth. That's that's gonna be cool. I, uh, it, it was a neat little thing. I had actually bought tickets just to go back in twenty twenty, and then the pandemic canceled it. Uh, so now it's neat that I'm getting paid to go hang out <laughs> and do that. Nice. I will give them all my money back when I spend it on video games there, but that's not <laughs> the point. Now we got to get you to go to Magfest. Yeah, if they'll, uh, if they'll, uh, uh, th- this this makes me sound like a, a douche, but if they uh, make it worth my while to leave my house. <laughs> I will gladly do it. I wonder if they're still taking uh, applications for performers or panels. Because I imagine you you could obviously perform. They've had stand-up performances before. Uh, you've you've emceed stuff before, haven't you? You could always like do in-between concert sets maybe or something. Do a panel. Yeah. Get drunk with us and party. <laughs> That's yeah. the main reason I want you there. <laughs> yeah, just to, to get me drunk for the first time in my life. <laughs> or or to just don't. eat Nando's, really. Nando's is delicious chicken. Now we're talking. Mm-mm. As long as I can eat it off of Jacob's uh, chest hair. That's the, the oh. only way I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> for the right price, you can do anything. Attaboy. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> and that price is one cent, by the way. No, the price <laughs> is actually one fifty nine ninety nine, which coincidentally is the same price playstation plus is going up to <laughs> that was an expert level segue right there well done <laughs> oh man yeah. yeah nope yeah we we got to get to news we got to talk about some news uh mm-hmm. the big thing obviously playstation announced their september game lineup and we'll get to that in a second at, at the bottom just as a little casual throwaway they're like oh yeah the prices are going up too <laughs> uh they listed their new prices without listing the previous price order percentage of the increase. So that's why we're here. Uh, Essential is going from fifty nine ninety nine to seventy nine ninety nine. Nope. That's for the base online play level. Wait, what? Hold on. Who said nope? That was Aki, I think. Yeah. Aki, do you even have a PlayStation 5? No, but I sure as fuck wouldn't spend money for that. That much money off of that. Fuck that. I agree with her. Uh, extra is going from ninety nine to one thirty four ninety nine, a thirty five dollar increase. 
Jesus. Yeah. And premium, you know, the one that has all those extra retro games that we love talking about so much on this show because of how good their lineup is. It's going from one nineteen a year to one fifty nine a year. That is I, I I still think the one nineteen a year was too goddamn much. One nineteen a year was too goddamn much, especially for what they gave. But now to increase it by thirty three percent, forty dollar increase. No, nope. no, nope. yeah, Hell that, that, no. that that is one of those. It, it that that just reeks of hubris to me. Yeah, like like like. I don't think I'm naive enough to think that prices will always stay the same forever. It's just the the cost of doing business. Things are going to go up. But, man, you, you got to slow play those increases so that, like, nobody notices or cares. It, it, yeah. It's a lot easier to be like, okay, five extra bucks. That sucks, but all right. When you jump right to 40, uh, I couldn't have unsubscribed fast enough to make sure that I don't accidentally get recharged. Yeah, I did the same <laughs> thing. I immediately yep. canceled. Hell. That is a lot of money for not getting any real benefit from it. Realistically I mean, they're, speaking. I'll, I'll admit their extra lineup is great. They have some great games in their extra tier. Uh, it's a pretty solid game pass competitor. Their premium tier sucks stick. It is absolutely not worth the extra money. I regret having it. I regret having paid them and given them money or these, quote, retro classics that they give us, like, three a month of, if that. And you kept it for so long. I know. Because I'm like, well, the first year was rough. The second year's got to be better, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll get <laughs> the only. swing of it. They'll, 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 they'll get their legs under them, and everything will be fine. Yeah, second year, I mean, oh, we're, jump, we're jacking up the price 40 bucks. <laughs> Bye. You know, I mean, we're Steelers fans. We're used to being, we're used to saying, that you know, uh, it's a building year. <laughs> yeah, usually we still do good, which doesn't make any sense, even in our rebuilding years. But yeah, yeah I, I, I will say it was very bold of them uh, to announce a huge price increase when their highlight game they were uh, giving out this <laughs> month was Saints Row <laughs> 2022. Yeah, Saints Row. That's it's going into their lineup. Saints Row, Black Desert Travelers Edition, and Generation Zero. Yeah, I, I feel you have to lessen that with a little bit more of a bang. And, and I've not played the Saints Row, so I can't personally say if it's good or bad, like whatever. I have. Like, it was mediocre. I, I, yeah, I, have I was going to say, this, it, but it's not say, Saints the, Row. The, the general discourse has been it is average at best that is well, <laughs> yeah. i have a piece of news about the that since we're talking about the new saints row oh it's probably Embracer the news group. i'm getting to yeah. right now go yeah. for it well go for it oh well i mean you go ahead uh hot on the heels of saints row uh joining ps plus to much fanfare Makes mission has been closed effective immediately no oh, that makes me sad that's right volition shut down Today, with zero warning. Mm-hmm. And they've been, what, like, I think I saw, like, in business 30 years or something yep. like that? Yeah. I mean, they made the old Descent games. Um, they got like, embraced I mean, to death. Mm. Yeah, which really makes, like, you wonder just, like, how much more shit is going to happen over at Embracer. Yeah, uh, well, they were in the news last week, too, because they had some big deal go south. And well, that's the, what I'm, the Saudi deal. Yeah, yeah no, the Saudi deal went south. They're just like, oh, you're gone. You're go like, I mean, who's going to be next? You know, anyone else who has made a game that commercially failed miserably. I feel bad for Volition because they made some great stuff over the years. Oh, but yeah. Nobody liked their vision for the Saints Row reboot. And they would no. just double and triple down. It's like, well. You haven't seen it in action, and then you see it in action. It's like, well, you only saw part of the writing, and then we saw the whole game. And they're like, well, you, um, yeah, we're out of excuses. <laughs> yeah, it was a shame because like all the prior Saints Row games were great. The Red Faction games were great, yeah. and then just one bad game. And no, two bad games: Agents of Mayhem. I forgot that existed. It was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize it was them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so two bad games and they're gone. And that just makes me sad. 
Yeah, it's it's depressing. <laughs> I remember <laughs> saying I wish Xbox would buy them. I I don't. I think it's better that they're they're gone. Let them move on to new pastures and uh, build a new legacy instead of trying to rebuild what Volition has become. Yeah, just I mean the sad part is though, like bad games are bad games, but like it sucks seeing anybody lose their job because like even a bad game, it's not like they're not like like nobody tries to make a bad game. No, <laughs> they're doing their I best. Mean... I'm sure they're talented. No, 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 nobody in a studio that large. Okay, I'll fair say enough. <laughs> you know, like, there are like, people they're trying who to try to make bad games. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I I know one very specific dev that only puts stuff on PlayStation that fits that criteria real well. Jason Pontus. <laughs> I he, wasn't going to say the name. <laughs> the legend, Gilson B. Pontus. <laughs> I I've never. I, I've never seen someone so bad at making games make so many <laughs> games. I I can't imagine he makes any money off of this. Are we are we sure it's a real person and it's not just like the Alan Smithy of video no, games? No, we're not. Not at all. No. We'll never know. Uh let's keep the 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 sad news going. Me 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 games, oh, the developers yeah. of Shadow Tactics and Desperados 3 shutting down shadow gambit the cursed crew was their final game they they will be supporting it and releasing patches for it but it is their final game that's they did they did it for goodish reasons at least they were like you know we put too much into making these games and it was hurting everyone's mental and physical health and their relationships so we got to end it so everyone can get their shit back together so you know good on them for that i guess but man it still sucks that their only solution to that was to close their doors yeah it's a bummer i mean there is something to be said and again i don't know the full the full scope of like why it came to that decision but i try to live my life generally like if something's not bringing you joy anymore it's better to get out than just kind of beat yourself up mentally and physically <laughs> doing oh, it. Oh shit, on that note, that's the end of this episode. We are going to wrap yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My plan worked. Nice. Uh, Can't stand that, any of you people. <laughs> Fair enough. wonder if I could get Grant to do a 90210 theme song cover before the weekend. <laughs> maybe. Oh my god, I'm going to message him now. That might be pushing it, but maybe. <laughs> It'd be funny. Uh, Very. Let's switch gears. A little bit of good news. We were talking about Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars on day one (coughs) sold 100,000 copies. Good for them. That is awesome. And and what's even more impressive about that is that it's also on Game Pass and PS Plus. Yeah. (laughs) Uh People could play, but it sold 100,000. Like, that's that's awesome. Jacob, any thoughts? None. No thoughts. Head (laughs) empty. Head empty. Uh, Call of the Wild, the Angler was surprise added to Game Pass on the 30th. Yep. Eh. So if you want to get your fishings that? on, go. Everyone's Ooh. excited about fishing. Holy shit. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to hop off the show now so I can start downloading it. <laughs> you, you, are you going to download it on your phone or something that you have to get off the show? <laughs> well, I don't want, I don't, I don't want, like this show taking up more bandwidth than it has to. So, you know, yeah, I wanted excuse. To, I wanted to download as quick as possible. Well, if you want things to happen quick, you'll want to play your Nintendo switch because you could go quick in excite bike 64, which is now part of the Nintendo switch online and 64 lineup. Cool. I don't know that game. Was that not like a bad excite bike? It wasn't horrible, but it was an N64 game, and it was 3D. There's more than one Excite Bike game? Yeah, there's Excite Bike for the NES, then Excite Bike 64, and then Excite Truck and Excite Bots. Oh, God, I forgot Excite Truck exists. That's Chris's all-time favorite racing game. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Uh, we, We have a delay to talk about. Suikoden 1 and 2 HD Remaster has been delayed out of the year into 24. That was going to be on my news list because I've been following that a lot. It's uh, it's it's a little bit sad, but, uh, but I kind of called it a while ago because I feel like they've been avoiding announcing a date because of Ayuden Chronicles. 
who also recently pushed to 2024. <laughs> but um, I, I actually went and, and looked through some of their social media posts and, and they are really doing an actual remaster and not just a port. So I, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy to see the, 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 the clips that they've been posting and what they're doing, if it's going to, you know, take them time to make that really, really good, like good on them. I'm happy to wait for it. So and hopefully it turns out for the better. We'll find out. But uh, let's see. Beyond Good and Evil had a 20th anniversary edition rated by the ESRB. So surprise, Beyond Good and Evil's coming back again. Yeah. Well, and, and, it, and it's nice, too, because next year it'll be the 20th anniversary of them announcing Good and, Good and Evil, Evil 2. Too. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's if we can maybe tie those together. Uh, yeah. I, it, They'll do it. Up, up. It has been 20 years and we've gotten the same game released three times before a sequel comes out. I don't think it's ever going to come the fuck out. Probably not. <laughs> I think that thing is dead on arrival already. It, it's never going to come out. It is gone. Remember the one E3 where they showed a trailer of pig dude and just like sitting by a car. I do. And then that was it. People lost no. their minds. Then we didn't hear anything else for like 10 years. <laughs> Wasn't, Wasn't that like 2016, 2015, like 2016? It was the same year that Dead Island had its like really cool trailer <laughs> or something. And then like that just vanished for too long. Oh, I think that would have been like 2013, 2014 then. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Dead Island 2 turned out pretty decent from what I've heard. So I mean, maybe there's a chance. Something that looks pretty decent in my eyes, and I am very excited about this. We got some more details today about Pinball M. Has anyone heard of Pinball M? Yes. Tell me is more. Is it for masochists? Possibly. <laughs> it is slated to be the first M-rated pinball collection platform. Oh, so, so it's going to have all the boobies. Okay. Not necessarily boobies, but they're Dick. violence. Pass. They, no boobies. Pass. <laughs> well, they've only announced a handful of tables so far. We still we don't have a release date. Uh, there will be a director's cut version of the Wrath of the Elder Gods table <laughs> that's already in Pinball FX. And then they also announced that there will be Chucky's Killer Pinball. <laughs> okay. And Dead by Daylight Pinball. Okay, then, I guess. I don't know if they're going to be packs or tables. But uh, more info will be coming soon, I, I presume. No release date is planned yet, but it will be coming to Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, Epic, and Switch, quote, soon. Maybe it'll hmm. come out in October. Come out for Halloween. I was going to say, I mean, like, if they've got Chucky and Dead by Daylight, then that's perfect time for it to happen. Yeah, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> when will they add Redfall pinball? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Never. Um, right after on a pinball. Anyway, last bit of news I have is Microsoft made a new hire in Japan. Mena Sato Kato as the director of partnerships in Japan for Xbox. She was previously the VP of a mobile business for Sony. Hopefully this means more Japanese games. It would I be nice. So. I would love yeah. to see companies like Xseed and <coughs> Axis and more Atlas games, NIS, more games from them. See, you say stuff like that. I want to see some, like, people that we've never even fucking heard of. Like? I don't, I don't know, because I haven't fucking heard of them. That's what I want. Shit, I've never heard of. I mean, it would be kind of fun if, like, they just dig up, like, these new remasters of things. And it's like, yeah, this series came out on the F-Towns Marty, like, back in 1989. Like, it was really big. I don't yeah, know, I, Stick random like that, or even like old ass Gundam games. Yes, be yes, I want Gundam games. Yes, I mean then I can finally understand what the fuck I'm doing in Z Gundam Hot Scramble. I have no idea what the fuck that is, but I want more Gundam games. <laughs> it was a game for uh, <laughs> Nintendo. I used to play the ROM of it all the fucking time, and I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Fair Thank enough. You. My mind's now permanently stuck on Gundam. Thank you. Good job, Jacob. She's broken for the rest of the episode. Yeah, basically. Because all I can think of is all the gunpla I want now. No. Anyway, that's the news I have. What do y'all got? I bought a bunch of new gunpla. <laughs> Damn it. 
Weren't you just saying how you have a bunch yes, of stuff I, yes, you yes, need to I, save up for? Yep, yep, yep. I'm not doing good financially, but I keep buying Gunplay. Yeah, yeah, it's you, a problem. You know, Aki, you can't get your roof repaired. And, you know, the point of a roof is to protect your Gunpla. Uh, <laughs> you are correct. You know, if you don't... <laughs> You're right. You're right. You, I, I'm, I can't deny it. You are correct, yes. Your Gunpla are going to get rained on, Aki. No, they won't. And not just I'll put because- clothes over them. <laughs> <sighs> God. <laughs> Jacob, what news do you have? The only news that I have is Gran Turismo debuted at number one in the U.S. box office with a paltry 19 point, I think it was $19.3 million. It knocked Barbie out of the mm. one spot. That's a shame. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I still haven't seen Barbie. Huh? I still haven't seen Barbie. I still, yeah, I still haven't either. I really want to. Um, but then again, also, you know, the Taylor Swift new, uh, concert movie got announced. So, you know. This I, that. I saw a trailer yeah. for Expendables 4. I thought that looked okay-ish. I didn't even know they were still making those. The the only reason I'm somewhat a little bit excited for it is because at the end of the trailer, they're like, definitely rated R. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's how you fucked up the last movie by making it PG-13, so maybe this one will be better. Yeah, I mean, well, they definitely learned their lesson on that, because, I mean, I watched, I've actually never seen the PG-13 version of Expendables 3. I only saw the unrated one. And honestly, I thought it was fine. But again, it was the unrated version. Yeah. So so all that digital blood was gone. Any profanity was gone. <laughs> Not which, the profanity. I know. We need the profanity. Yeah, which like I thought was weird that they tried going for the PG-13 rating because nobody who's going to go see Expendables like, is wants under a wholesome the- movie. <laughs> we yeah, want to see well, people well, get blown up and bad guys get murdered. Well, it's just like yeah. how bold of you to th- to think that anyone under the age of eighteen wants to watch an Expendables movie. Yeah, like <laughs> how bold of you to think people even that young want to see it. Uh, think I think the answer is anyone below the age of like thirty. Uh, <laughs> I think the Expendables are fun for being in your twenties. Yeah, just stupid, I mean, if- stupid popcorn movie. Yeah, like if you grew up watching like. <laughs> Stallone and Schwarzenegger and stuff like that, then yeah, it's perfect. And, and you think those people would be in their 20s? They were when the first one came out, dipshit. <laughs> uh, no. Oh no. Oh my god. We were! <laughs> this is getting a little contentious right now. <laughs> we saw them. We are the people being talked about. <laughs> I was gonna say, I saw <laughs> what, I saw the first one with Joe actually, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got to watch a movie last night in theaters for, I think it's like the second movie I've seen in a theater. Would you since, see? Uh, 2020. I saw a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, and How it was amazing. It? Oh, it's I want to so see it so much so fun. Bad. Yeah, the, the animation's cool, and it's a it's a cool take on the, the turtles, which I just enjoy anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Very cool. cool. I want to see that one i'll probably pick that up when it hits blu-ray or something and again i still need to pick up the super mario movie i still haven't seen that nor dude, have i dude you know it's in the voodoo account right you know i like watching discs right <sighs> you know you are watching these nuts i would watch these nuts i know you would you pay good money to watch these nuts yeah 159 <laughs> 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 That's a great subscription price. <laughs> I know. A year of D's nuts? <laughs> you need to make fake ads for like weird segments like where you have to ch- change that. That needs to be a thing. Hey, I gotta Just hire someone to do like fake commercials for the show. I wonder if my buddy Flick could do. Oh, man. Uh, Bree, any other news on your end? Um, I might be a little late to the party and you guys already talked about this like a week ago, but um, I just found out that uh, Phasmophobia is in fact still coming to Xbox uh, They and maybe PlayStation. I don't know. Uh, it's coming to consoles, I guess is what it says, but uh, they delayed it to Halloween. So yeah, 
or close to Halloween. But uh, yeah, I'm I was actually pretty excited about that. I, I played uh, Phasmophobia on Steam a little bit, and uh, it, was, it was pretty fun. So glad we're getting cool. into consoles. Uh, I saw apparently Immortality is going to be making the jump over to PS5 as well, which I wonder if they're going to have to make any concessions in the nudity in that game. Mm, yeah. Because I've seen some clips of the game. Funny enough, I saw them on the Xbox in the mm-hmm. watch list <laughs> for the mm-hmm. social tab. People just uh, upload whatever the fuck they want. And yeah. they'll be there for a day or two until Xbox finds them. But yeah, you could see some some pretty uh pretty adult stuff on <laughs> in that game. Oh, oh, there is definitely <laughs> some stuff in that game that is that is above and beyond what I would have expected initially. So yeah. Adult stuff. You mean like like filing taxes? <laughs> <laughs> Mowing the lawn in your new what? balances. Yeah, and Crocs. Doing Tucking bar- your shirts into your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Doing some barbecue and just saying, mm, that looks good. Yeah, you should turn that over. Yeah, so immortality going to be going to play. <laughs> I really wonder if they're going to make any cuts. Yeah. How bad, how bad does it get, Bree? Because I'm assuming you've played quite a bit of it. I, 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 yeah, I played the heck out of that. Um, there's, For there's research, a, right? there's, there's a fair amount of nudity. Um, there, there are some, um, there's some graphic violence. Uh, not graphic. Ugh, it's hard to explain. Like, there's suggestion of of other types of violence. There's, you know, some some gore in there. Like, I don't want to give away certain like scenes that are like pretty big. But yeah, there's some there's some stuff in there. There's there's definitely some like pretty pretty close to like this is a sex scene where. You know, a decent amount of stuff is shown, but not like beyond a certain level where like we have to rate this something higher. So, yeah, I'm honestly amazed from what I've seen that it's not an AO rated game. Yeah, maybe next game. <laughs> Immortality 2. That'll be adult. Uh, Ryan, any news on your end that you want to talk about? Nah, you got to talk about everything I cared about. Well, we didn't talk about you enough and we care about you. Well, that's true. But I can always talk about myself. Well then, Being do a, it. What's going on with you? What uh, right. what games are coming up that you're looking forward to this year? Uh, well, um, it, it's a, a little basic, uh, but uh, after watching the uh, Nintendo Direct this morning, I'm uh, extra hyped for Super Mario Wonder now. I, I I love I like the 2D Mario's way more than the 3D Mario's personally, and uh, I am super excited to play that. The Direct was today. I missed that. Damn it. Yeah, there wasn't a ton of new. An important news. I guess the one cool thing, if you like, for someone who already owns, I think, 13 Nintendo Switches now, they did announce a, <laughs> a, uh, a Mario, a, a red Mario one, uh, OLED, which I have it? to fight. I, I want it. I have to fight myself. Uh, my, my wife and I just had a, uh, had a conversation last week about how we just need to budget more. So it might be a hard sell to be like, yeah, but can I buy my 13th Switch, please? <laughs> <laughs> Am I making well, it a little I mean- tricky? <laughs> I mean, you got to tell your kid that they got to start pulling their own weight around here, you know? Yeah, well, I'm already sending, uh, you know, I live near L.A., so we're already sending them to auditions <laughs> and such. Is that something you would you would want to try to do with your child is get him into acting? If he wanted to, that, uh, you know, he's he's three months old, so it's not like we've made any real big decisions on anything just yet. I mean, I know but, but, three months, you've probably had very long sit down conversations in yes. depth, back and forth on the matter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what he wants to do. But, but our, our general rule is, like, if he's passionate about it and wants to do it, then yes. And if if not, then no. You know, like, there, there's things, like, in my, you know, stereotypical testosterone-filled dude brain that I'm like, yeah, I want him to play football and all that. But if he doesn't want to do it, I'm not going to make him. Whatever he wants to do. So if he wants to be an actor, I, I would, whatever he needs. What if he wants to grow up and be a podcaster? Uh, I mean, I'll... Let him know. I, I have him talk to you, and that'll change his mind. <laughs> I'll be in the loony bin by then. <laughs> that'll get him right out of that. Yeah, I, I just want him to care about anything. That's really that's kind of where I'm at right now. Just I just want him to like stuff and be passionate about something. Besides pooping. Oh uh, man, he's super passionate about that. So is Jacob. <laughs> I mean, true. Jacob, are you my son? Uh, I mean, I call you sometimes. I was drinking there, and I almost spit all over my desk. <laughs> <laughs> almost, damn it. I'll get you next time. 
<laughs> I just free- I just feel like Bree is constantly like, God damn it, why do I put up with these people? <laughs> I'm a I am a woman of varied interests and I keep a very straight face. <laughs> yeah, we probably should have pre warned Bree that anytime I come on the show, there's uh things that go in our worst. asses and, <laughs> and yeah, things get things get nasty in here. <laughs> I, I'm I'm good for the shit talk. Okay. I oh, love it. Love it, love it. So uh Anything else anyone wanted to talk about before we dive into the reviews? I know we got a bunch of games to talk about, but if if anyone else wanted to bring up a subject to discuss, the floor is open. I mean, Game Fuel is coming back in uh, November. What? You heard? <laughs> what, what, what? Mountain Dew Game Fuel is coming back in November. How did I not know this, but you did? Oh, <laughs> I have news on that one, too. I saw I saw an article about it. Uh, it's going to be uh, a Diablo themed one and a Halo themed one. Nice. Did you see the gelato and that they're trying? No. There is oh. some Mountain Dew gelato. They are making Baja Blast gelato. They're doing it in a test of it in California. Yeah. yeah. I, I am hoping, if all goes to plan, that that will be the first real food that my son tries. <laughs> <laughs> Gelado. <laughs> That's what I need him to do. <sighs> oh, I'm, I want him to grow up to be cool. That sounds pretty... Uh, Disgusting. You know, I'll try yeah. it. I'll try it. It sounds gross, but it's one of those things that, like, yeah, I'll put that in my mouth. Yeah, make it nationwide. I'll give it a go. Yeah, are but they you doing put a it lot- at Taco Bell, or what are they? where are they doing it? Uh, I'd have to find the article again, but uh, yeah, that just came across my feed, and I thought that was wild, because especially it was Baja Blast was what was in the picture. So, yeah. And yes, Jacob, I do put a lot of things in my mouth. I don't want you to lose that joke. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> they, it's Taco Bell. They added it to a test store menu. Yep. Does it say where that store is, outside, other than just kind of <laughs> Irvine? Yeah. Oh, that's like an hour from me. I can uh, maybe I'll make a little road trip and I can report back next time on the Do show. It. Do yeah, it. Do it. Uh, there, uh, there is an address here. Yep. There you go. I, I, I will do it for one hundred and fifty nine ninety nine. It it went out today. Was the first test. There's a drive through. It costs two dollars and ninety nine cents for a three point six ounce serving. Okay. There you go. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can do that. I, honestly, that's not too far from me. If I can uh, escape the house, I'll, I'll give that a shot. It's only there for yeah, two weeks. When, yeah, but when would you be back on the show next, Ryan? I mean, like, I, it, I mean, it doesn't what, really help what, if you're not on like five months next from year. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll let you, when it's already like already been canceled, I'll be like, that was pretty good, by the way. You should have <laughs> tried it. It was really nice. <laughs> it was really decent. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well. Now that the now that the baby has uh, been expelled uh, from from my wife, I can uh, I can probably be on the show more often if if Joe doesn't mind all the uh, the dirty talk. Now uh, that the uh, has been- uh, <laughs> Jeez. yeah yeah my, my 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 wife finds me to be very romantic. <laughs> I love it. We got to get you reviewing stuff again, Ryan. I like when you review stuff. We do. I just not, now. I actually, I have the time now. I, I, you know, I say that as I now say I didn't have time this week <laughs> to review <or> anything. <laughs> but theoretically, I have the time now because I'm, uh, I'm kind of, I'm still, I'm still on the road a little bit, but I'm more or less uh, rocking that stay-at-home dad life right now, and it's awesome. Well, hell, Jacob's off next week. We could use a sub then. <laughs> uh, could you also use a dom then, though? That's what I need to know. Uh- Speaking of gaping, already up. one here. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I say that as uh, I, I will actually be traveling next week. Uh, that's uh, on my way to, to Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, I'm so sorry. My shows at hyenas. Hey, they're paying me. That's, that's what I say about anyway. So many places to be like, oh, you came here. I'm like, yeah, because they they gave me a check. I'll go anywhere <laughs> for that. Like, and, and I'll have a good time. It's not like I have to go begrudgingly, you know, but like I'll per- I'll perform anywhere i do this show for free <laughs> yeah i still don't know why yeah, but we thank know. you but we thank you <laughs> and uh now, now i'm gonna like i am gonna up my prices to 159.99 now. That's, <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know if you can get some uh some you know twitch donations or some uh go fund me going but my <laughs> price just went up i i am the sony playstation plus of this podcast son of a bitch oh well 
Best I could do is offer you a copy of Smurfs cart. <laughs> Not, that's it. it sold. I, I am a. But I, I wanted am. that. <laughs> You're not going to be here, Jacob. But I can <laughs> review it the next week. What needs to be done next week? That's what deadlines yeah. are. But Wiener. No, damn it. I'm gonna I be mean, your, your butt stuff's not until Friday. You could always record it Thursday early in the day. Have you ever had a colonoscopy, dude? Drop like, it, bitch! Not, not like one given by like a creepy guy in the back alley. I was just saying, not, not the official Thank one. Thank you so much for 159 <laughs> bits. <laughs> Ag thought. <laughs> like, we're 100th of the way there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you lloyd love having you here uh thank you for the support or acolyte so, says they just had a horror uh yeah horoscopy, no, a horoscopy. Colonoscopy <laughs> on Monday. i'm pretty sure i had, had one and scary. then came, i'm pretty sure i had one and then came in and reviewed the same day yeah well you, you also <laughs> like whenever you fart it just sounds like <sighs> so that's so? So record in the bathroom like you usually do. Exactly. Oh my god, no. <laughs> why is there a bad echo in there? Y- yeah, that's definitely the reason why record in the bathroom. Oh, Jacob, what do you think about this game? Oh god. <laughs> my ass is like a volcano, you can sacrifice virgins on it. Good lord. I love it. Uh, that said, we do have to move on to reviews. Ryan, we're going to let you get going. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with us and chatting with us. Uh, Hold on. Absolutely. Make Ryan do a review. What? Make Ryan do a review. Of what? I don't give a shit. I, I can do a, a review of my son's blowout this morning. Do it. All right. What system is that on? Uh, it, 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 it was uh, The system that it was on was his uh, his onesie and my hands. That was the two things that ended up on. Uh, uh, it was a uh, it, lot, lot of content, uh, but not a lot of substance. I, I, so I'm, uh, I'm four trying out to of figure 10. out how we can set this up. Who's it developed by? I don't know if like Ryan's uh, kid. Uh, who's it developed by? Uh, breast milk. Developed Studios. by breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> Studios published. Oh, Ryan. By Ryan's yeah. child. What? While I'm thinking. From one parent to another, I'll give you a secret about poop that no one ever like, like no one ever knows about. When your kid is old enough to like start eating solid foods, feed them peppers like green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers, like that kind of shit from the grocery store. It's going to make the diaper changes go not nearly as smelly. Okay. Just, just trust me on it. I like that. But uh, will the same uh, work for my diaper changes? Um, yeah, I mean, your poop's not going to smell so bad, but I don't know if it's going to help with how runny it usually gets. Okay. Well, my, my my wife will appreciate any help she can get. Yeah. You might just want to buy a shop vac. Yeah. Well, I guess (laughs) let's, let's start then because the first game to talk about tonight is called Ryan's kids blowout developed by breast milk studios, published by Ryan's child released August 31st on his kids back for one fifty nine ninety nine. baby diaper blowouts often happen with infants and young babies whose poop is still quite liquid and loose. A baby blowout or poop explosion as it's known refers to extensive diaper leakage. Ryan, tell us all about your kids blow out well uh i i will say it was a uh a surprise drop it had not been previously <laughs> announced it was shadow dropped <laughs> in the middle of the night um and i'll say uh, uh the, the controls were difficult <laughs> uh not really conducive and how about the visuals i mean like i mean co- I mean, is there a lot of color to it? it like, the palette. <laughs> the, the palette. It's, uh, um, I, I guess the closest I could say to the color is, like, think the inside of a pumpkin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Um, and, and, and yeah, uh, I, I think uh, it, it's kind of a troll game because the entire time I was cleaning it, uh, he just was uh, laughing at me and smiling at me. Uh, so oh, that's intentional that's yeah that, he knows what he's a, doing yep 
Yeah, and, and then the other thing too is that like it got over a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't know if it's a that's a programming error, but it should not have corrupted all the other uh, things in in the in the system. Uh, but it sure did. Uh, I have a feeling I will be playing the sequel tomorrow, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's a quick okay. turnaround on a sequel. Sounds like the Airy games. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if if I had to give it a uh, what what what's the what's the review system that you guys use? What's the uh, uh, you, buy yeah, it, you don't do numbers. try it or deny it. So at one fifty nine ninety nine <laughs> for a year's worth of your kids' blowouts. What's your verdict? Uh, I, I would give it a try. It. Um, I I think it's uh I I don't think it's going to be your favorite game you've ever played, but it will. Uh, it'll be a good story later. Root beer. This is the worst episode out of nine hundred and two. <laughs> <laughs> and my work here is done. Oh, perfect, Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, out I with appreciate us. Please don't be a stranger. We miss having you on. Uh, let's do it again soon. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, check me out cripplethreat.com and Cripple Threat Eight and all the stuff. Come see a show. I'll I'll be talking about my baby's shit more there too, and I know, uh, and then I'm actually if I can root beard if you don't mind if I could use your quote to promote my shows going forward that I was a part of the worst episode out of 902 I'd appreciate it. <laughs> use that as your announcement, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Coming to the stage, participant in the worst episode of 902 episodes of the SML podcast. Give it up for Ryan. Miller. That wasn't bad. I like it. Hey, I'll, I'll send it to you. Perfect. I appreciate <laughs> you guys. Have a good night. Have Please. a good one. Right yeah. Bye. Oh. You know, I, I just wanted him to just like review some random ass game that, you know, it could have come out like 15 years ago, but that was so much better than I <laughs> ever have <done> before. <laughs> yeah, that worked out really well. All right, is, are we ready for actual reviews now? I I mean, I guess. How do we follow that up? Please, like, please let me get the fuck out of here. <sighs> Man, I got to talk about cute stuff. What? 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 Yeah. I got to follow that? Yeah, let's follow that up with the uh, next game to talk about is Virgo versus the Zodiac, developed by Munana, published by Serenity Forge, released August 23rd on Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC for $19.99. Dethrone the Zodiacs, revive the Golden Age, and purge the heretics that swarm the galaxy as Virgo, the queen of purity in this unforgiving timed action turn-based RPG Bree, what is going on in Virgo versus the Zodiac? Well, uh, a lot of that really covered well in that uh, description there. But um, I guess I'll I'll talk about the story first. Um, you in this world, uh, like the Zodiacs are personified. They're the god rulers of their realms. For someone who's into astrology, you'll probably feel at home with the stereotypes of like personality under each sign. Um, it's, it's very comically and lovingly represented, like, you know, Capricornians are too busy with their own agenda to notice other things going on that don't concern them. If you aren't familiar with astrology, that's okay. <coughs> it's still just quirky, fun character writing. Um, our main character, Virgo, is the villain, but it's also her story. Uh, she thinks it's her duty to right the wrongs in the universe in the name of purity. She misses the golden age of the celestial system and is trying to bring it back. She goes around confronting the other gods of the Zodiac to take their crowns. Um, her starting companion is a sentient gingerbread cookie with antlers. I, I don't, I don't, it, that, that kind of sort of has a purpose later on down the road. But at first, it just really didn't make a lot of sense. But uh, there's a lot of quirky stuff in this game that is just really cute. Uh, later, we're joined by some, some um, stars. And I, I say stars, like think of them like avatars of a representation of stars. So we have these people. Uh, that are that are joining us on the quest. Um, Story-wise, it's kind of an interesting twist on the typical hero's journey, right? Because she is really the villain of this piece. Um, and if you've if you've heard the phrase like the hero of one person's story is the villain of of another, you might have an idea kind of what the twist of the story is. But 
at the same time, we really want to agree with our hero because even though she's arrogant, maybe misguided and too far from the idea of purity, we can still see the corruption that's going on in the other realms, like Capricorn has worked her people to death and kills them when they get too inconvenient. And you just see all over the cosmos how these zodiacs, these these kind of gods, have let their realms really get out of hand. Um, and so you spend a lot of the story kind of in this, you know, agreement with someone who, by all rights, should just be the villain. Uh, there's a lot of really good jokes and uh, modern stuff, like striking workers, and it's mixed in really well with familiar fantasy tropes. There's some... Alice in Wonderland influence in some spots. Uh, the game is really punny. Uh, overall, it's just a lot of really intelligent writing. Um, I kind of loved the the quirky package uh, that that otherwise is is got a lot of really thought provoking moments and, and deep emotional context to the story. There's a there's some some romance um, that's that's going on with some of the characters, and um, and it's just it's just really good writing. Um, Music-wise, also lending to that, um, gosh, just, I would highly recommend checking out the the soundtrack. It's by Electro Bear and Procrastinating, which is just great names. Um, it's, uh, again, a good blend of fantasy and sci-fi elements. It really gives this whole, like, cosmic vibe to it. There's some emotional sweeping pieces. There's, like, some dark kind of, like, industrial type leaning stuff. Um, there's, like, some other quirky music you might expect to find in a JRPG. Um, the, the beat overall on just about every piece was fabulous. If you like, you know, electronic ambient music, like check it out. It's available in several places, Bandcamp on the Munana YouTube. Uh, it's available on Steam. I really enjoyed that aspect as well. Um, mechanics wise, it's got a few things that are a little different. First of all, um, no random encounters. Uh, there are extra fights that you can you can go out of your way to make if you're really looking to like level your character, kind of see where where you go. There's three different difficulties: uh, stress free, zodiac, and masochist. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I uh, you you can change the the mode at any time. I went with stress free, and uh, I struggled really hard in the beginning. Uh, a lot of the combat, while it is turn based, there are. Um, blocks and hits that you get bonuses on if you hit it at the right time. So there is an active component to the combat. Uh, and I struggled with that a lot at first. Uh, some of it you're kind of like learning as you go. There's also um, a quality system, like a stat system. It's like a trio of uh, attributes, ambition, versatility, and patience that are all like the zodiac qualities. And you kind of have to balance between them, pick different things for your characters. Um, I really focus my my playthrough on ambition which is kind of aggressive um staying on the stress free because i really again struggled in the beginning um i'm planning on doing another run through at a higher higher level now that i understand how things work um see you live off of coffee also tea and lemonade that's like your healing items i thought that was really <laughs> cute um especially if you're ambition focused you are going to be drinking all of the coffee all of it <laughs> Um, if you if you want to be more uh, patient, you're going to drink some lemonade. If you want uh, that versatility, you're going to have some tea. Um, that that's kind of really how you balance in there. Um, there are at least four endings to the game, so I've got one ending so far. Working on a second right now. Um, there's just so many cute things to talk about in this game. There's horoscope polls that give you tips on how to improve your gameplay and how things are going in the story. Um, just the combat became really fun once I got along. Uh, cuteness is a stat. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Just kind of like how stats, I don't know what it affects, but cuteness was a stat. And it makes sense for this game in, in every way imaginable. Um, you can save just about anywhere. There's a save dinosaur who not only uh, darling, but uh, is just like he's a cosmic character that shows up in the world in the game. And you can talk to him and he has just like random things he says and then like vanishes. Um, he, he likes to remind you to save because he loves saving, don't you? <laughs> um, yeah, all in all, um, my experience with this was, was really good. I, I enjoyed the story. Again, really emotional narrative, really quirky, cute writing with uh, some deeper emotional context. And, um, you know, again, making you think about, uh, hey, I'm sitting here and I'm agreeing with the villain. You know, what does that mean for me? And uh, what does that mean for her choices down the road? Because you do have some some opportunities in the game to make some different choices. And uh, I'm looking forward to exploring those endings. 
Um, I will say I had a couple of small knocks um, from an accessibility standpoint. There were some cut scenes that had continuously moving dialogue, and I wish there was an opportunity to like pause and press a button when I was done reading. It didn't move too fast for me, but there were a couple moments where I got distracted because like a cat ran across my keyboard and I missed some dialogue, and that was that was a bummer. Um, there was another like puzzle scene that was kind of out of place and and really didn't seem to work the way I thought it should, and I had to kind of brute my brute force my way through it. Um, but other than that, I had a really delightful time with it. And um, if you are into JRPGs, want to check out something with a little bit of a different story, you know, from the villain's perspective, um, I would highly recommend this. Ooh, well, it clocks in at nineteen ninety nine. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm going to say buy it. Definitely. Cool. Any other thoughts on it? Uh, I think I'm good there. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, moving on, next game is Truth, developed and published by FMV Interactive, released August 25th on the Series X and S for $12.99. Step into the role of a discerning judge in a fictional game show as players you must determine which larger-than-life contestant truly deserving of the million-dollar prize. Prepare to dive in a world of deceit, revelation, and unforgettable characters. Jacob and Bree, both of you played this one. Jacob, how about you start off what's going on in Truth? Jacob. <laughs> Bree, how about you tell us what's going on? Oh, wait, Dude, Jacob what? just said something. Did, did we get him back? Is he back? Yeah, you got me back. All right. You're supposed can to you start talking. Me? Now yes, we can, can hear you. Okay, yeah, I had forgotten to turn my mic on. And then, like, after I started talking, like, with the mic on, Joe was like, all right, well, Bree. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, gave you, like, 30 seconds. <laughs> no, you didn't, you dickhead. He had a good 10, at least. Oh, my God. Yeah. What's that's going what on they in all truth? Say. All right, so you wish you had a truth is this second. game show. He's lucky when he, when he has a two. Okay, <laughs> just be nice. Anyway, so truth is this game show uh, that's hosted by Garrett Wang, who uh, you may remember as Ensign Harry Kim on Star Trek Voyager, um, which FMV Interactive uh, they seem to be getting everybody on from Star Trek Voyager, and I'm all for that. Uh, but anyway, uh, so this one is similar, uh, to Vegas Tales, and this one, uh, you're on a game show hosted by Garrett Wang, and there's a million dollar prize, and each round you have to, uh, ask five questions to each contestant, and then at the end of each round you can decide who is going to be, uh, knocked off, and eventually you just decide who's going to win the million dollars, and then you get like, you know, this is what happened to them afterwards, kind of stuff. Very similar to uh, Vegas Tales, although this one, you know, you have more characters, the background is a bit more believable, um, and you definitely have a heck of a lot more option with how the dialogue works. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it, it's it's an improvement over Vegas Tales, because uh, Vegas Tales just kind of felt like this, like, you know, it, it felt more like a visual novel uh, than anything, and all you were really deciding is which order you were going to talk in, to people, mm -hmm. and who was going to win at the end. Uh, this one, because you're eliminating somebody on each round, you're not going to be able to an ask all the questions. Uh, to them, and so you have to decide what question you're going to ask um, for what you think is going to be the most interesting out of everybody. Um, and everybody's hooked up to a lie detector, although I only caught one person lying once. Um, so I don't know if, it, like, what order you ask things uh, plays a factor into that or what. Um, but while the format was very much improved from Vegas Tales, I still kind of found it a little bit lacking. Um, yeah, I had a pretty similar thought. Um, like, it's a it's a fairly simplistic entry into the FMV side of things. Um, it it's it doesn't have a lot of choice point other than the different questions and. Um, like I enjoyed my time. I thought the questions were interesting. The character, the writing was was still entertaining, but um, it didn't feel like uh, there there was a lot of um, like the you know the truth gimmick to it, where they have the the lie detector thing. Like it didn't seem like it had a lot of bearing uh, on the actual outcome of anything. And like the, there's not really a lot of choice point to the game other than deciding you know who you want to win each time. Um, 
or, or let go of in each round, which, um, again, it was still entertaining for that. Well, the game uh, uh, clocks in at 13 bucks. Is there anything else either of you want to say about it, or are you ready for a verdict? Did we lose Jacob again? Jacob. Did his phone die? Jacob. <laughs> Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Bree, what are your thoughts on this game for twelve ninety nine? Uh, I mean, overall, I enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I enjoyed Vegas Tales as well. I thought, you know, the characters were quirky and fun. And uh, if you if you like that that style of like visual novel, it's uh, it's is pretty fun. So yeah. All right, hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can. All right. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened with the mic on that. All right. Well, for some reason, it was saying you were going through Xbox or something. Yeah, Maybe that I was, was causing the issue. I, I was because I was trying to have a mic, like an actual mic, uh, instead of my iPhone. All right, how many so, mics yeah. have I got you? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway, the best part is, is like I'm over here freaking out because it's like <laughs> Bree's interrupting me, and I'm just like, "What the fuck? Can nobody hear me?" <laughs> like, yeah. So anyway, all right. So, um. Going back to truth, like what what I didn't like about it is that it was kind of like it was supposed to be set up like a game show, but none of it ever felt like a game show. Like mm -hmm. Garrett Wang never felt like a host. There was no banter, but like there was actually no. There's one moment of banter between uh, a contestant and the host, and the only time that like it happens, it's very clearly you had to say something uh, previously for it to happen because they make a comment about his time on Star Trek Voyager. Um, mm. And it, and it very, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna lie. It was a sloppy cut like for the dialogue. And cause it's, it's very much like they just toss it right in there. And like the guy changes positions like from how he's sitting immediately and then immediately goes back to the other way. Um, and it's just, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's just like, I know that they're starting and like, they're just porting in stuff that like was, I think on PC and probably for like, uh, like Netflix kind of, uh, kind of stuff. But it's just like, again, for a game show, the backgrounds didn't look like a game show. It looked, you know, it looked like they were set up in a soundproof room, which was a CGI back design. Um, and the, like, I mean, the gameplay and the story were okay. Like, it, it's not going to set the world on fire. But one thing I thought was a complete fucking missed opportunity on this was the ads. Because between mm. each round, uh, they had Garrett Wang do, like, a little ad. Like, this was brought to you by the letter K. Or, like, come on down to, like, this, this general store or something like that. And at first, I was like, oh, like, because when he's like, oh, now a word from our sponsors. I was like, oh, my God, are they going to do, like, fake ads or something like that? This is going to be amazing. And then it's just, like, him reading off of a teleprompter. And I'm like, you guys could have done so much with that. Like, I was, like, I was, I, my initial hope was that it was going to be, like a, a like, a RoboCop level of uh satire during it and it just it just falls flat and it's like you can see that there's a lot of promise with this stuff and i enjoy my time with it but it's i don't know i'm like i'm just looking for their next release to like i want these guys to do better like because i i like i That's like what the they've potential. got going like i like what they've got going i'm glad that they're uh, like a little scrappy company bringing back, helping to bring back FMV games. Um, it's just, I, I, I really want the, their next title to be, you know, to be better than this. Like, I, I like it, but it's, I don't know. Like, there's better things in the genre, unfortunately. All right. Well, like I said, it's 13 bucks. What are your verdicts? <sighs> For 13, like, I'm not going to. I, the thing is, is like, that's the price of like a DVD or something like that. And that's about the same time that you're going to pay for like, you know, I mean, this is about like movie length to play through. So for 13 bucks, I don't think that's, I don't think that's bad. You might want to wait till it's like down to like 10 or something like that. But, um, I'm like, I'm fine with it. 
try it at least. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at too. Like the price isn't bad. It's it's kind of like like you're saying it's about the length of a movie. Like it's that's it's a reasonable price. But like yeah, if you were to get it on sale for a couple bucks cheaper, like I'd definitely say go for it then. Well, sounds good. All right, next up is Mirrored Souls, developed by the Brick Studio, published by Short and Sweet. Released August 23rd on Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC for $14.99. A mind-bending single-player co-op puzzle platformer in a beautifully illustrated, soothing, lovely game. Bree, what is Mirrored Souls? So, platforming puzzler where your characters move in tandem, but their motions are mirrored. If you've never played one of these before, an example of a solution might be that on side A, you have to position your character behind a box. While on side B, you keep moving until there's a correct amount of distance between the two of them so that when you jump up, you'll both be in the desired destination. Um, the story presentation was something I, I was not expecting, like, this deep a narrative, I guess. And, and it kind of hit me, I don't know, maybe maybe it's just, you know, the personal stuff that's going on in my life right now kind of hit me. But um, the story presentation is this, like, series of reflective conversations between two celestial opposites. That's our characters that we're following along on this platformer. They're existing in the same world, separated by this, like, invisible wall created by the day-night cycle. The characters remind me of, like, myth mythological creatures. Um, and I started to think about the story in terms of, like, allegory. The story was, like, meditation of ideas. Um, they... Like some of these conversations uh, between our characters ask the players to contemplate like what what it might be to meet someone who completes you, but you're still separated by the divide of space or opposing views. Our characters are positioned so their actions are similar but completely opposite. Uh, somehow by being connected to each other and being so different made them feel complete though. And um, it's just a really kind of touching story as you're going along through this this platformer. Uh, puzzle game and um, their relationship finds some complications when the moon casts doubt into what they're doing what they're saying how things are going with their relationship uh, it addresses other concepts like holding back information to spare someone's feelings might seem bad but sometimes it could be a good thing to allow us to figure out things at our own pace like the puzzles um, one of our characters ends up having like this existential crisis like it really gets kind of deep um, some of the puzzles got hard and more so because it was fiddly and less because it was challenging or at least that's how i felt like sometimes the solution was to cheese the level because i, I really couldn't find a logical way to solve it otherwise um but uh i was able to complete it in a couple of hours um and there's a handy chapter select uh there were some like neat challenges on certain levels for like achievements to go and do some of them like um do this particular level without jumping or you know stuff like that or fun um, achievements it sounds like yeah yeah i mean they they were like a good level of challenge without being like over the top um and yeah i like i said um you know it was a good like tandem mirror puzzle game um a, aside from like i said there were a couple levels where there were just some mechanics like involving lasers and other things where things just kind of got a little too fiddly and i i, I couldn't logic my way through it but i brute forced it by kind of just you know really really wiggling that just 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 ever so slightly to get it to go so i'm not sure that that was the real solution but um i couldn't find another way to do it really um but yeah, I mean, the, the story to me was the, the real good selling point that there was just this really good narrative going through the piece um, to go with it. It felt a little like like sometimes there's here's the reason why we have this mirror tandem puzzle thing going on. And it's just an afterthought to have the rest of the story. This actually felt like the story was a feature to go with the puzzles. And I liked that. Sounds good. Seems like you enjoyed this one. I did. Ooh, well, it clocks in at 15 bucks. What are your thoughts? Um, For the time that I spent, I feel like that might be like the slightest bit high, but I would still say go for it. And if you can, you know, get it for sale, if you like these kinds of puzzles, like for sure. Sounds good. All right. That is it for you, Bree. Uh, what is mm -hmm. on your plate for streaming tonight? Man, I just want to hang out with my bestie and like shoot barrels and catch myself on fire. I need to not think about things for a while. So that's what I'm going to go do. So you're not streaming a game tonight. You're just going. I am going to stream. Battles. I'm going to stream all no, that's of not that. What I heard. So I heard you're going to go out into the real world, find gasoline filled <laughs> barrels and shoot them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
No, like seriously, last time we did this a couple weeks ago, I got into a tractor and I turned right and I can't even tell you why, but everything just caught on fire. I caught a whole field on fire. My trailer, my tractor was on fire. Like, I don't know what exploded or why. It was just explosions and flames everywhere and I died. And what Wait, game what is this? this? Far Cry 5. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, Farming Simulator 2023 is... <laughs> Yeah, no. So, yeah, I'm going to go shoot things and have some senseless violence with some cultists and, you know, smash some cars and drive some planes and shoot things and be silly for a little while. So, yeah, all this thought provoking nonsense, all this deep emotional narrative I've experienced this week. I need to just go shoot some stuff now. Thanks. <laughs> this is deep narrative what? about baby <laughs> blowouts. <laughs> well, we won't keep you from doing anything else shitty um, tonight. So, <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <sighs> Do you have any final um, words before we let you go? Uh, uh no. It's uh it's it's been uh it has been a lot of shit talk. Thanks. Oh, oh, <laughs> cat sneezing. There you go. That's cat my sneezing. final words. Yay. Cat sneezing. Yay. Ooh. Have a good night everybody. Bye. Bye. All right, next up is Dust in Neon, developed by David Marquardt Studios, published by Rogue Games, released August 17th on Xbox Series X and S and PS5 for 19.99. Death is just the beginning in Dust and Neon, an action-packed twin-stick roguelite shooter set in a post-apocalyptic Wild West overrun by villainy. Aki, what is going on in Dust and Neon? Okay, so in this, you are a uh, zombie, basically. Woohoo! Uh, a mad scientist has decided to bring you back to life as a gunslinger to kill all the evil robots of the world because uh 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 because he can I guess whatever uh and whilst you play the game uh it obviously it's a twin stick shooter but unlike a lot of them you're not just playing through like a full story instead this is all very mission based you uh go to this map and it shows you missions that are available and after you beat a mission, the missions change. Or I guess technically if you fail it too, they change. Um, so you're, whatever you see there is just what's available at the moment, and they change constantly. Um, some of the objectives for these missions are like, rob a train, because that's what good guys do, right? Um, or kill all the, uh, all the robots, all of them in the entire level. Or here, kill these specific robots. Stuff like that. There's like eight different types of objectives you can have in it. And after you play enough of those and have leveled up your character enough, you unlock the ability to fight against the boss of that area, uh, which requires you to play through all of his mooks first. And then you get to fight against this robot. And he's a most dick. of them... Some of them are, yeah. Um, <laughs> most of them aren't too bad to fight against. There, are, There's one specific one that I had so much trouble in, and it wasn't even the last one. That's the painful part. Uh, <coughs> but the, the great thing is, as you level up and such, you uh, and beat some of these bosses, you unlock new areas as well. But sometimes there's two bosses in the same area, and if you're high enough level... You can choose which one of the bosses you fight. So you don't even have to fight all of them quite in order. Um, I think specifically bosses three and four are both in the same area. Uh, and I believe beating either of them unlocks the, the fourth area for you. So that's nice. Um, and yeah, uh, in this, you... You don't, uh, unlike lots of twin stick shooters, you don't find like random guns around that you can switch out. Uh, in this, you get three primary types of guns. You get a pistol, you get a shotgun, and you get a sniper rifle. And you can pick those up at the very beginning of the level. You, uh, if you unlock the ability, you can pick one of each up for free right at the beginning. They all have random fucking stats. Uh, depending on how far you've upgraded the base, because there's base upgrades. Th there's there's upgrades galore in this bitch. Um, yeah, and something I appreciate with this game is it doesn't really overload you 
it kind of guides you for the first couple of hours and it's like okay do this all right now now that you died go back here and do this it's all right now you can do this and it's yeah. it's very i don't want to say it's handholdy but it's very <coughs> guided and it eases you in really well yeah you you don't go into this game and you're like oh uh here's this place you can buy stuff from here's something else you can buy from here's something else you can buy from and oh here's 15 different places you can upgrade no it 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 gets you one upgrade place at a time teaches you how and how to upgrade that and what the upgrades are in it and then it gives you the next upgrade and explains how that works after you beat the next level basically um so it very much just goes through this at a nice relaxed pace so you understand basically how everything works and the first time through anytime you get any of these items uh, because there's a few different stores that pop open from upgrades. The first item, they explain to you basically what they do, and it's free, so you can fuck around with it and not lose money if it ends up being shitty and you just don't realize it. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, eventually you get the, abil- the ability to you know buy weapons, and those are always random. There's a random one of each, and you can give money to reroll things. Uh, or buy back the weapons that you had in your previous run, which I found to be extremely useful because some of the weapons I found uh, at near the beginning of the game were the weapons I carried throughout the entirety of the game because I was either really lucky at the beginning or I was just shit out of luck the entire time. I'm not sure which. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you, you also get upgrade points for your own character. Uh, there's two different uh, trees basically there's an upgrade tree that basically is all your weapons uh, ammo counts damage critical uh, rates accuracy things like that and then there's the other tree the important one which is hey here's some health don't die for like the 50 <laughs> billionth time uh here, here's the ability to the all your health kits give you more health. Oh, killing enemies gives you more health, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The good tree, the useful tree, the tree that you want. Uh, <laughs> we can kind of you're kind of getting the idea of what tree I went for, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, uh, you for the first handful levels. I think the first thirty levels you get. Uh, is it? I think it's two points per level and then once you hit like level 30 it all gets one point after that because technically that's the last level you really need to be in order to beat the game i got quite a bit higher than that because i um (laughs) suck um that being said i don't suck too much because i only had 12 deaths in the entire by the time i 100 percented the game oh wow i had 12 deaths and two of those were mandatory, and you couldn't avoid them. So I think I did pretty good. I think you did pretty good. You know who didn't do good? Whoever wrote yeah. up their listing on the Xbox store. I I saw the word, so I had to do a search for it. Hmm? There are six uses of the word unique on their store page. My eye didn't just twitch at that. No, nope, Six. Nope. There's thousands of unique weapons. Okay. Not there's, really. There's nearly 2,000 wholly unique revolvers, shotguns, and rifles. Not really. Well, if there's over 2,000, then that's actually using it properly. There's 2,000 unique. They all have there, their own there's, distinct... There's really not. Really what it is, is there's Having a different few... stats makes it unique. Uh, I, so I in, guess. I don't in like In a sense, that. they are correct with that one. There are 1,600 unique tonics... That allow you to temporarily change or enhance your abilities on the battlefield. That can, I can believe. And you can upgrade your gunsling, gunslinger with 24 unique skills that fundamentally change the way you the game plays. And if that's not enough, mm-hmm. at the very end, explore a huge varied world with four unique regions. Shoot it out against an impressive roster yeah. of robot enemies with unique strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> Uh, 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 two in a sentence. Two in one some sentence. Of, 
Some of these aren't unique. I'm just going to point that out right there. Uh, unique weaknesses. They're all weak to shoot them in the fucking face. <laughs> the end. That's not unique. Every enemy in the history of video games is very uniquely weak to shoot them in the face. Like we, we laugh at how overused the word unique is, but it, it, it's truly something special like this to get six in one write-up. Yeah, that's six. That's Whoever insane. did that, please use a thesaurus. Use some other words besides unique. It is overused, and we make a mockery of it on our show. Uh, sorry, and we love you. The game's great, by the way. <laughs> yeah, game's great. Game um, is great. Weapon, I hate when they're like, oh, you need all these unique weapons. Like, no, no, no. There, There's a few different types of each gun, a few different brands, basically. But being like, oh, this gun ha does 13 damage and this one does 14 damage. That's not a unique fucking difference. That's just an upgrade. The end. <laughs> so, yeah, that if you're like, oh, yeah, they all have different stats. Yes, they're unique. Some of them are better guns than other ones. That's it. Um, Boom. Well, the game clock's in at 20 bucks. What are your thoughts on it? Yes, I'm totally for this. It was I, I thought it was really fun. Um, boss number four will piss you off because he's a rat bastard. But otherwise, it is a fantastic game, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Cool. Next up, this is a unique one. The making of Karateka, developed and published by... Wait, no, Karateka, if, if I'm rem remembering how Mike said. You, the you're making, remembering it correctly now. <laughs> the making of Karateka. Developed and published by Digital Eclipse, released August 29th on Xbox One, Series X and S, PS4, PS5, and PC for $19.99. A Switch release is planned for September. Play the history. Go behind the scenes of Jordan Mechner's landmark game, Karateka, or Karateka. God damn. And in this interactive documentary from Digital Eclipse, with archival materials, video features, and more, experience pixel perfect versions of the legendary game with all new features. Jacob, tell us about your time with the making of Karataka. So I had actually never heard of this game before, um, but really, yeah, never heard wow. of it. Um, like, well, the thing is, well, is like, now you I, know everything about it. <laughs> well, yeah, you you end up learning quite a freaking bit. Um, but the thing is, is that like I uh, I never got into like the old Prince of Persia games which is, this is also by the guy, like, this was the game that came before that. Um, it's directed, designed, all that kind of stuff by the same guy. Um, so, in this game, uh, which came out, I think I think it said 1984, um, you play as this uh, unnamed hero who has to go up to this mountain fortress to go save this princess, uh, who's also your lover. Um, and you have to defeat this big bad guy named Akuma and all of uh, like all of his minions. And you do this with um, you can either block. Obviously, you can block people's hits or kicks uh, or you can hit or kick people. And it's a lot of like timing and just making sure that like you're in the right place, right time. Um, and also like memorizing how things work, uh, because, you know, sometimes gate gates will actually like fall down and it could kill you uh or at least wound you um and also akuma has a hawk that randomly comes in uh that you have to like quickly like punch in the head to make it go away until eventually you just kill it and it just like explodes in a bunch of feathers <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh and there's dogs that chase you that are dicks i don't I've just been running into like. Did you play the? Maybe the dogs are in the the new version then. I didn't see them in the new version either, though. Because I got into the castle in the uh, in the new version, and one of the rooms there was like a dog that would run through, tackle you, and it also had one of the doors that you had to make sure you didn't step on, or else it would shut it closed on you. So the timing had to be absolutely perfect, and I just I couldn't get past that section. Oh. Yeah, but the thing is, we're we're dwelling on the game here when the game is very much second fiddle to the experience, right? And so, uh, so the game actually presents itself more as like 
uh, more of like a museum piece, and you learn about the game's creator uh, and his early designs for video games that he was sending to Broderbund. Um, and what's really cool is that like it shows off like what some of these demos look like because some of them like they still have other ones are little mock-ups of like what the general gist of it was. Um, but it's, there's interviews, there's pictures, there's videos, there are, uh, like there's scans of actual like game documents. You could see like how he fleshed out, like all these ideas for, uh, for how he wanted the game to work. And, you know, and it also talks about like what worked in the game, what didn't, uh, eventual ports of this game. Um, and yeah, like it's really friggin' thorough. And like, I was just blown away by this. Cause again, this is a game I wasn't familiar with. Uh, and when I first started playing, I was like, Oh, this kind of looks like Prince of Persia. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. No shit. Because it's the same guy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's really interesting because you can see a lot of like prototype ideas that, and, uh, what was that you cut out for a few seconds? Hold on. Um, you get to see like a bunch of like prototype ideas and like how they got fleshed out for this game. Um, and it's just really neat. And like digital eclipse did a fantastic job, uh, bringing all this together, making it a coherent presentation, providing us with like tons of material stuff, um, for a game that, you know, not everyone's going to be familiar with. I mean, like if you hear Prince of Persia, you're going to remember that um, because that that's been like a standard for what? 30, 30 odd years. Yeah. More than 30, like, good Lord. Yeah. But it's just like this one, it was kind of like one and done um, as he moved on to other projects. And so I like, I think this is really awesome. Um, and I'm really looking forward to like all the other stuff that digital eclipse has got going on. Uh, the game does require some precision to it. Uh, a lot of precision to it actually. Um, so you might find it frustrating, but like, I mean, it, once you get down pat, like how a run through is going to go, it's going to take you like 40 minutes to an hour, I would say. Um, so there's some pretty decent gameplay in it. Um, and speaking of gameplay, there's a lot of versions of the games in there. Uh, yeah, like there's the Commodore 64 version. There's I'm, I'm just going to go version. through the list. There's the Apple II oh, okay. version of Karataka, the Commodore 64 version, the Atari 8-bit version, uh, Karataka Remastered from this year, the new version. Then they have Death Bounce Rebounded, Death Bounce First Prototype, Death Bounce Colored Balls Prototype, Death Bounce Little Man Prototype, Space Train Prototype, uh, Karataka Jordan's Prototype, Karataka Brotobun Prototype 1, 2, Asteroid Blaster from Apple II, and Star Blaster from Apple II. That's the game library in this. So you've got a ton of variations of the games to see how it progressed over the years, how it progressed from platform to platform, uh, just the whole documentary making of the fact that they have uh, live commentary. Well, not live, but they have like commentary, audio commentary, uh, audio yeah. commentary during it. I didn't live means that they're like doing it live. So, but actual commentary during the games as you're playing, Mike Michael pop on and start telling you stuff. I miss that guy. I wish well, we could get him like back on. There's also like a demo mode in it too, where you can yeah. just watch where we can watch the gameplay itself and it'll uh, give all the audio commentary as it's going through. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, a really, really cool package. This is the first absolutely. in their gold series, which this they're planning to make this a series of releases. And if this is their first game, I'm excited to see what comes next. And Oh my with, God. With how much love and care they're putting into this digital eclipse is just blowing my mind with with their efforts in preservation. I love yeah. it. Yeah, like the only like <laughs> I, I'm hoping for a lot more releases like this. Um, and I know that there are some fan sites that would like you know uh, give their left testicle to be able to be a part of this kind of stuff. <laughs> um, 
like, I mean, like, I follow, like, the Wing Commander Combat Information Center, and I'm just, like, after seeing this, I'm like, oh, God, please, 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 like, work with them on, like, making, like, a Wing Commander thing, like, one of these Gold Edition things for it. Like, just please do this, because, oh, my God, I'd love to see it get the, the museum treatment. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts? 20 bucks on the making of Karataka. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even if you're like, wow, this game is not for me, which I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm real shit at early Prince of Persia games. I mean, the game uh, isn't for everyone. It's a game. It's a yeah. fucking 40 year old game. Yeah. But at the same time, like all like all the history that you get with it and with how it's presented, it's totally worth 20 bucks. Cool. If anything, you're helping pr- you're helping promote game preservation. Yeah. Like, so you need to get this. It's one of the most important. I and I will not say this lightly. It is one of the most important releases of this year, and it follows in the vein of Digital Eclipses, uh, the Alabunga collection they put out for Ninja Turtles and Atari Fifty. That was Atari Fifty was also very much like a an interactive documentary at points. I wouldn't know. I didn't get to review it. Cry about it, bitch. Next I game will. to talk about is The Bridge Curse, Road to Salvation, developed by Softstar, published by East Asia Soft, released August 30th on Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch, PS4, PS5, for $29.99. Prepare yourself for an Asian survival horror tale told through cinematic first-person perspective. In this atmospheric action adventure, explore the events surrounding one of Taiwan's best-known supernatural incidents, a terrifying campus horror set in Tungu University. When six college students challenge the urban legend of a lingering female ghost, they awaken a curse no one knows how to break. Aki, what is going on in the bridge curse, Road to Salvation? All right. In this, you play as not just one person, well, you play as the entire cast of dumbasses who decide that you're going to break all the taboos on the planet and more or less summon a ghost that has terrorized the school numerous times in the past. But for some reason, even though it's well documented in the literal news, you're like, oh, it ain't real. We're going to turn this into something just to get people to come here and give us money to help the school. Because that's not real, even though the news has documented people doing this and it going very badly time and time again. It's not real. (laughs) So in this, you play as the six morons who uh, are basically heading this group. They're all uh, higher-level students. Uh, This is more or less a... uh, I want to call it like a rush type thing. It's something for, you know, freshmen to come in and just have a little fun with, more or less. And you guys are trying to set this up. uh, Trying to figure out what actually works. You're making it seem realistic. uh, And then you accidentally do the things that you're not supposed to do and it becomes very real, but there's no freshman yet because everyone's on vacation right now while y'all are setting this all up uh, over a vacation break. So it's uh, it's just up to you six morons to deal with this all on your own. Uh, so yay, fun, fun. Um, you, you don't get to switch between the characters as you... Uh, Dane, uh, you actually have individual chapters with the, with each one. Most of the chapters aren't particularly long. Um, I think the longest one I was in was like 35-ish minutes. Uh, and you cycle through them a couple times uh, through it as it tells the story. Um, at first, it's more or less just seeing what's going on through everyone's eyes as this first happens and everything get goes to shit uh and then it continues uh the story from each individual person so these people go do this and then these people will do this during that time and after it and it'll just keep moving the clock forward a little bit as you go through the next individual on the list that you play as um this game can generally be beaten in about four to five hours 
So it's not a particularly long game, uh, which is why I'm not talking a whole bunch about the story, because they summon Ghost, they have to stop Ghost. There you go. <laughs> um, if I go any further than that, I will give away so much story. <laughs> Well, uh, is it is it an enjoyable romp for the thirty bucks they're asking? Yes, I I thoroughly I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought the story was really well done. I really like how the characters interact with each other because each one has their own personality. Like there's a couple people who are like super 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 superstitious, and they're like chicken shits and they're freaking out the whole time why they're part of this i have no fucking clue but they're like you know one of them's praying like almost every time you see him because he is so fucking scared of all of this shit and another one's just chicken shit in general and then there is a girl who like she doesn't believe in ghosts and even when she sees it and she's like oh this is a ghost well guess what fuck you ghost i'm gonna <laughs> kick your ass <laughs> like you're gonna do what i say because i'm awesome and fuck you go and it's like they're all such interesting <laughs> characters at the end of the day and they interact with each other a whole bunch like at first all six of them are together but eventually they end up getting split up and lots of them you deal with on their own for a little bit but then eventually they start getting back together into a group and then splitting off again and getting back with other people and splitting off so on and so forth so you always constantly get these character interactions between the characters, uh, whether you're playing as one or not, and they're really good. I thoroughly enjoyed how they wrote these characters and their interactions. They were so fucking funny. Nice. Um, and it, it's not just even funny stuff. Like, there's some drama up in this bitch. Because uh, two of the students have been hiding that they've been dating because one of those students used to date someone else, and that motherfucker's jealous. So it's like, it has a bit of everything up in this bitch, and it is <laughs> so good! Oh my god! Well, it is $29.99. It is actually on sale for the next two <coughs> weeks for twenty five forty nine. so you could save five bucks on this. What are your thoughts? Buy, try, deny? I, for most people, I say definitely buy this. If Horror is not your thing, obviously, especially if Asian horror isn't your thing, you're probably not going to like this a lot, um, because there is a difference between Asian horror and, like, American horror. American horror is very much jump scare, that's it, whereas Asian horror, you know, things are following you, creepy atmosphere is uh, much more played out uh, than in American stuff generally. Definitely more psychological. Yeah. Um, so if that's not your cup of tea, this game probably isn't for you. Um, if you're a little having a little trouble with money, wait for a sale. I think it's definitely worth getting, though. It is really good. Cool. All right. <coughs> one final game to talk about tonight is some DLC for Pinball FX, William Pinball, Star Trek The Next Generation, developed and published by Zen Studios, released August 24th on all platforms for Pinball FX. Nine ninety nine. experience an out-of-this-galaxy pinball adventure on the Star Trek The Next Generation Williams pinball machine. Join Captain Picard on the USS Enterprise D and fight against Romulans, Cardassians, and the Borg while listening to the original music and voices from the series. Uh, Jacob, how'd you have fun taking out Kim Kardashian? It's Cardassians. No shit, really? Yeah, really. Wow. You don't watch Star Trek, so I wouldn't expect you to actually know. <laughs> you dick. Anyway. No, you moron. Uh, no, I doubt you do. <laughs> so how is this table? Uh, so I like so this was also my first foray into the, the latest version of Pinball FX, um, which first off is pretty as hell. Um <laughs> And uh, I really enjoy like how much like variety that they have so far in it. Um, and with it, you know, it, yeah, it's cool that we got like Star Wars and Indiana Jones and Marvel stuff, but now we've also got a Star Trek table too. Um, and this one is a recreation of the Next Generation Pinball Machine, uh, which I believe came out in '93 or '94, if I remember correctly. Um, 
And yeah, there is, it's a busy table. There's a lot to look at. Um, and like, I mean, it's got ships, it's got characters, there's shuttles flying about, which I thought was a very nice touch. Um, and yeah, it's just, you, I don't exactly know how the missions work. I mean, like, I, I know that there's a Man, guy. I don't know how anything works in pinball when it comes to missions and scoring. I just hit the flippers and get points. And, yeah. <laughs> um, so I was having plenty of fun with it. Like, you know, you get to hear like reproductions of the cast uh, voices and stuff. Um I was having a little bit difficulty seeing it. I don't know if I just had to mess with the brightness settings uh, for it. Like, is it me or is the pinball FX game dark? Uh, depends on the table, really. Some some okay. of the darker tables can definitely be tough to, to read and tough to see. I know some tables, okay. like, like trolls in particular, just because of how colorful it is. When you use the view, t I use view two on every table so that it's just the wide view, full, full table. Uh, it gets really hard to read some tables. Okay. It's like they went overboard on designs. All right. Cause this one, I was like, if it wasn't at the bottom, uh, if I like, if I didn't see the ball shooting towards the bottom, I generally had no idea where the heck I like, where the heck it had gone off to. Um, but honestly, this was like a, it felt like a much more friendlier table though, uh, compared to some of the other ones I got to play, uh, which I thought was a little interesting. Uh, and I don't know if that was just by design and they were like, you know, with the original table back in the nineties, if they were, if they wanted to make this more accessible to Star Trek fans or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that's it, why it's an easier table to play just because of the license on it like how kids pinball tables usually are fairly easy to rack up high scores on because they you know you don't want to make the game unapproachable right but um but yeah i was having plenty of fun with it uh i mean it looks cool if not a little bit dark but uh to make out some of the details but again i might just have to play with the view and the brightness with this game um but i was having a lot of fun with it and it's nice to see that this one got brought back again because i remember back in probably like 10 years ago i don't remember which one of the pinball games it was but like the like Arcade. the next generation oh yeah okay. it was part of because uh pinball arcade had williams tables for the longest time so that's okay. that's where all the williams tables used to release and now with zen picking up the license they've been putting out uh what williams tables they're able to do and able to license and whatnot that's why it was such a huge idea that indiana jones got a release okay because like pinball arcade couldn't swing that but zen was <laughs> zen could so but yeah well, yeah uh, the table clocks in at 10 bucks uh i i know people complain about the pricing on the tables but like they take work to make and licenses cost money so you can't just get every table for four dollars or five dollars anymore I understand that they have to pay for these licenses and fees. I don't think 10 bucks is a bad price for the table when you compare to what other tables are out there. Uh, I'm glad it's not 15 like Indiana Jones, but I, I don't think 10 is too bad. And I actually, I dropped the 10 bucks myself to pick it up because I was excited for it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not thrilled with the 10 bucks price. Like, I mean, personally, I would, I would just wait for a sale on it, but um, if you're a Trekkie and like you want, uh, you know, you want to play that Star Trek pinball, then uh, drop your 10 bucks. It's worth it. I don't know whether I would just spend that money on it, though. You yeah. know what I mean? And then there's also the option that if you use the pinball pass, if you pay for coins for the pinball pass, it's included in there. So if you're a subscriber and you've bought a year's worth or a month worth, whatever it is, uh, the tables, they're ready to play. Yeah. That's true too. What are your thoughts on buying tables versus the pinball pass? Well, I mean, the thing is, is that not everything's in the pinball pass. Like the Marvel tables aren't in there. Um, and I don't recall if the Star Wars tables are, are they? I, I don't know what's in the pinball pass. I don't have the pinball pass. Oh, oh crap. Okay. Sorry. I can, I could fire it up real quick. Um, I noticed that there was a bunch missing and I believe it. It might have just been all the Marvel ones. Um, and if it's just the Marvel ones, and that's 
like that's fine whatever um but i did see quite a bit um but but, but, our wars uh, is included williams is included uh nickelodeon i don't see indiana jones no i think it's in yeah i don't think indiana jones is included and i don't think marvel is yeah i'm not seeing marvel which is understandable because you know licenses and yeah but i mean like that like licenses but at the same time like holy crap that's like that's a huge amount of tables for this game like i mean i know that they're rebuilding uh the content offerings and stuff like that for this but like yeesh i wish that was included and i also wish there's about 70 75 tables included in the pinball pass i think they're doing pretty good with that i would confirm but my xbox is still loading yeah, that's one of my biggest gripes with this game is that initial load time is a bitch in this game. And I don't know why. Yeah, because Marvel's not included. You're missing out on, what, 5, 10, 15, 20, 23 tables right there. Yeah, you could still buy them, though. Yeah, but that's also <laughs> quite a bit, though. Dude, I own, like, almost all of the tables again. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I'm missing like 20. (laughs) That's, Joe, you own almost everything of everything for everything. I know, I'm working on it. I'll get there eventually. I'm working on it. But, uh, (laughs) oh, that's that's not the correct takeaway, Joe. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's very much the correct takeaway. I will get there. I will complete my collection. (sighs) Do you want to know what I'm missing? I'm missing the Secrets and Shadows pack. It's three tables. Uh, Marvel Pinball Collection 2, that's a big one. That's 30 bucks for like 12 tables or something. Uh, Star Wars Pinball Thrill of the Hunt, there's two. Adam's Family, I'm missing that one. Bride of Pinbot, Swords of Fury, World Cup Soccer, My Little Pony Pinball. I'm shocked I haven't picked that one up yet. And uh, Gearbox Pinball, I need to pick up. The rest I got is I like Zen, Zen Pinball. Pinball FX. So, suck it. What are you going to do? Come at me, bro. Fucking come at me, bro. No, Nobody wants to come at you. I know. So yeah, pick up Star Trek. Next Generation is available now. Ten bucks. Did you give it an official verdict? Uh, Yeah, I'd go with... I mean, there's a trial version, so of course you can try it. But yeah, uh, but yeah I'd recommend buying it. Yeah, download a trial, give it a go, and if you like it, go for it. Uh, that is it for this episode. We made it through... Yay. I don't know if I have anything from Star Trek to play on this show. <laughs> I know I have Vert's Star Wars song that he did. Yeah, there. I, I don't recall there being a lot of OC remix uh, Star Trek tracks back in the day. Yeah, I know. Which is a bummer. Yeah, Star Trek. <laughs> the, there's a handful of memorable games. And I mean a handful. <laughs> I'm searching like all of my folders and nothing is coming up with Trek. I got a Shantae song. <laughs> Shantae. Shantae. Does anyone have any final wor- Oh, wait. Arm Cannon. They did a song called Star Wreck, which is Star Wars and Star Trek together. That's the one Therefore, we're going with. There you go. Good stuff. Does anyone have any final words to end the show? Do you I'm know the trail game? You both talked and I didn't hear either. Good. I want to talk about Baraki as much as I possibly can. Did you know that they made like a new Oregon Trail game for Xbox? Yes. Did we review it? No. Oh. Hmm. I'm Get tired. Up. Why are you tired? Because it is nighttime. So? Does anyone have any final words to end the show? I'm tired. Okay, good. Space. A final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before.